Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to dihybrid crosses, dihybrid crosses with pure breeding seeds, dihybrid crosses with the F1 generation, and then we'll finish with a summary. So in the previous videos we saw that monohybrid inheritance consists of a single gene being passed from one generation to the next. So we looked at how we can take the alleles of a paternal and a maternal chromosome, and we looked at how we can see through a Punnett square which of these alleles will be inherited by the offspring. But we did this with one single gene, and so this was monohybrid inheritance. Dihybrid inheritance, on the other hand, involves the inheritance of two different genes, or two different characteristics, each determined by a different gene located on different chromosomes. So for example, we can have one homologous pair of chromosomes, where we have a particular locus coding for a gene, and we can have a different pair of homologous chromosomes, where they code for a separate gene. And each of these genes are coding for a separate characteristic on separate chromosomes. And in dihybrid inheritance, we're looking at how each of these two genes is inherited into the offspring's chromosomes. So in this case, we use dihybrid crosses to investigate the simultaneous inheritance of the two different characteristics, for example, eye color and height. So we might be looking at the genes for eye color, for example, coding for blue or brown eyes, which are on a particular gene on a particular chromosome. And then we may also look at the genes for height, which are in a different place on a different chromosome. And we'll look at which offspring would inherit which alleles of both of these types of genes. And that's what we use a dihybrid cross for. An example of two different characteristics which can be inherited simultaneously are seed color and seed shape in pea plants. And this is what we'll be looking at in the example. So the seed color can either be yellow or it can be green. And we can also see the seed shape encoded by a different gene on a different chromosome as being either round or being wrinkled. In this example, the allele coding for a yellow seed color is dominant to the allele coding for a green seed color. So we're going to say that if the seed is yellow, it inherits a dominant gene or a dominant allele. So we'll give this a capital Y. And if the seed color is green, it's not dominant, it's actually recessive. So we'll use the same letter again, which is Y, but we'll make a little Y instead. And when we're talking about the seed shape, the allele coding for a round seed shape is dominant to the allele which codes for a wrinkled seed shape. So in this case, what we'll do is for a round shape, we'll use a large R because it's the dominant allele, so uppercase R. Whereas for the wrinkled seed, we'll use a little r because it's a recessive gene. So a dihybrid cross looking at the colour and the shape of seeds of pure breeding pea plants was first done by Mendel, who also did the first monohybrid crosses. In this dihybrid cross, the two types of pure breeding seeds were the yellow and the round seeds, both characteristics encoded by dominant alleles. So remember the pure breeding seeds mean that they only have the alleles for these particular characteristics. So being yellow, they would have had capital Y, capital Y. And being round, they would have had large R, large R. So they're purely yellow and purely round. So they're yellow and pure because they have two dominant alleles and round and pure because they have two round alleles. And the other pure seed was purely green and wrinkled, both characteristics encoded by recessive alleles. So the green one has to have had two copies of the green allele because otherwise it would only ever be yellow. And to be wrinkled, it had to have two copies of the recessive round and wrinkled gene. So this one was capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R. This one was little y, little y, little r, little r. And this works because the gene for the seed shape and the gene for the seed color are in different homologous pairs of chromosomes. So this can only work if they are on different chromosomes, not if they're on the same chromosome. So for example, this chromosome might be referring to the color, and this one might be referring to the shape. Therefore, any one of the two alleles for the seed color can combine with any one of the two alleles for the gene shape. So say this chromosome codes for the color, where we have the dominant allele, which is yellow, and the recessive allele, which is the green color. And then the other chromosome codes for shape, where we have round as the dominant allele, and we have wrinkled as the recessive allele. So the offspring has to inherit one allele of each chromosome pair. 
So the paternal will have copies, the maternal will have copies, the offspring has to have one of each. So the offspring may have green and yellow, which would be this one and this one, which would be yellow and round. So the seed would be yellow and rounded. It might inherit the yellow gene and the wrinkled gene, so yellow and wrinkled. It might inherit the green gene and the large rounded gene. Or it may inherit the green gene and the wrinkled gene. So when these pure breeding seeds are crossed, we can draw out a Punnett square to work out the genotype and the phenotypes of the offspring. So in step one, what you do is you work out the phenotypes and then you can use this to work out the genotypes. So here are the parents. We've got purebred yellow and round and purebred wrinkled and green. So the phenotype, if it helps you, should be written underneath this. So this would be yellow and round. And this one would be green and wrinkled. And then from this you can work out the genotype, and you can do this because we know that they're purely bred. So if the pure one yellow would be two dominant yellow genes, so two dominant yellow alleles, and it's round so it has to have the dominant, but it has both dominant because it's pure. And then for the green and wrinkled one, we'd have two green alleles, and you'd have to have two wrinkled too, because each of these are recessive and only get expressed if there are both of them. So then you can work out the parental gametes. So if this helps you first, write out the genotype again, and then what you do for each parent, you need to work out what the possible gametes will have. So remember, in the organisms, there are two copies of every gene, but the gametes are only going to have one of the copies for every single gene. So the gametes for this seed are going to need a gene for color and a gene for shape. So they can have either one of these. So actually, the gametes have to take one allele from each pair. So we can either have this one and this one. So we can have Y, R, we could have this Y with this R instead, which again would be the same characteristics. We can have the second Y with the first R, and we can have the second Y with the second R. So actually the gametes will always have a dominant allele for the color and a dominant allele for the shape, because it's purely got only those alleles in its genotype anyway. And then hopefully you can see the gametes for the green and wrinkled seed would again have the same as the original. So these are the only gametes these seeds can ever make. And then of course you need to just fuse the gametes together, and remember gametes are written in circles, then you can work out the offspring's genotypes. And by taking each column and row, you end up with different values. So first of all you can have Y, Y, R, R, by taking these gametes and this gamete, and remember you always write the genes in their own pairs, so the Ys go together and the Rs go together. And just match the row and column for every single square, and it does take longer than a monohybrid um, cross, but you have to do this for every single square. And you should end up with something like this. So all you do is you put the Ys together from the row and the column, and then you put the Rs together as well. Always put the capital letter first, and always put the alleles of the same gene in the same area as well. And then of course, from all of these, you can work out the offspring's possible phenotypes. So hopefully what you would have noticed is that actually every single offspring in the table has the same set of alleles. They all have heterozygous for all of them. So they all have the exact genotype, which is the same, which is large Y, small Y, large R, small R. So now you need to just think about what the genes code for and what phenotype this would have. Well, the yellow gene is the dominant one, and we do have a dominant yellow gene, so it will be yellow. The round gene is dominant, and so it has one here, so it must be round. So overall, the seed would have these two properties. So the dihybrid cross of those pure breeding seeds will result in the F1 generation all being heterozygous for both seed color and seed shape. So basically what that means is that when we breed these pure breed seeds in their first generation, every single offspring will be heterozygous. And remember, a dihybrid cross is talking about two genes, the colour and the shape here in this case. So every offspring will be heterozygous for both of these genes. It will have a dominant and a recessive gene for every single characteristic. So every single one will have the same characteristics as being yellow and being round, because these are dominant. This means that all of the F1 generation, so remember that's the first filial generation, the first generation of offspring, will express the dominant alleles in their phenotype. So remember, this is always for purebred first 
parents, making that first generation, and they will all be heterozygous. They will always express the dominant one because the dominant one is always present in a heterozygous individual. And in this case, the dominant ones were yellow and round. And so every single offspring in this generation will have that characteristic. What we can then do is use the dihybrid cross to be done with two seeds from the F1 generation, which will be the same genotype, whichever one you choose, which then give rise to the F2 generation. So from the F1 generation, taking two seeds from that huge square that we made before, we would have both of them having the dominant allele for color and a recessive copy too, and both having a dominant round allele with a recessive wrinkled allele as well. So we can make these together and see what happens to the offspring in this case. We can work out the genotype and the phenotypes of this F2 generation using a Punnett square in exactly the same way we did before. The thing this time that changes is the structure and the combination of gametes. So here are the parents, which are the F1 seeds from before, which all have the same genotype. But if it helps, first of all, write their phenotype, which remember the phenotype for both is yellow and round. And the genotype for the seeds as well, just below, from what we worked out before, large Y, little y, and large R, little r. So from the genotype, we can work out the gametes, so the parental gametes. So if it helps rewrite that genotype out again. So again, when you're thinking about gametes, remember how gametes work. They take half the copy of genetic material. So for every gene and those pair of alleles, they need just one allele out of that pair. So the first gamete for this one will be big Y, big R. The next one would be big Y and then the other R, so large Y, little r. And then it would be the little y with the big R and the little y with the little r. So remember the gametes have to have one copy of each gene. They can't have both. So you must take one copy from this one and one copy from this set. And eventually you'd have four combinations. And of course, because we have the same genotype here, those gametes are going to be the same again. So now, just like before, we just have to put these gametes into rows and columns and work out the fusion if they were to meet each other and then look at the offspring ratios. So now we work out the offspring genotype. So remember, put the gametes into the rows and columns and then simply fuse them together, taking one from each pair of alleles and make the new offspring, which will of course have two copies of each gene. So this one, first one would be large Y and a large Y, and then two round alleles. The next one would be a large Y, large R, Y, and then we've got round and a small round, and so on and so forth until you end up with this. So you can see that for the F2 generation, we've got a variety of different sets of alleles. And so the F2 generation has a different ratio of phenotypes. So then what you need to do is for each of these offsprings, work out what phenotypes they would have. For example, here we have a yellow dominant present and a round dominant present. So this one would be yellow and round. Any ones with a dominant Y would be yellow, and any ones with two copies of the green Y would be green. So for example, this one would be green and round, as would this one, and this one here too. Some of them have two small green Ys and two small Rs, so that means it's wrinkled and green. And we have some which would be yellow, and we also have some which would be yellow and wrinkled too. So there is a variety, and you need to count up for each one which how many we have. And when you count up, you should end up with these numbers. So most of the offspring are likely to be yellow and round. There's an equal chance for some of them, although fewer of them, to be green and round or yellow and wrinkled. And it's very rare to have both recessives, which is green and wrinkled. And what you can do with this after you've counted them is calculate the phenotypic ratios. To calculate a ratio, you do how many there are. For example, there are nine of the yellow ones, and you put them as a ratio to each other. So we would have nine, yellow, and round. We had three of these two, so three to three. This would be green and round, and yellow and wrinkled. And then one, green and wrinkled. So this is the ratio. It's always a number relative to other numbers. So what this means is that for any resultant F2 generation from a dihybrid cross, whether it's talking about P's or other traits too, they will always have the same fractions of numbers. So 9 out of 16 of the total were of the yellow and round variety. So this means that 9 of 16 in any dihybrid cross will always have both dominant genes. So looking back at our results, 
nine of these in the 16 have both of the characteristics where there's a dominant allele somewhere. Three out of 16 of them will have the first gene as dominant and the second one as recessive. The other three out of 16 will have the same but just reversed. And one in 16 will have a case where they're both recessive. So that was our case with the green and the wrinkled peas. So any dihybrid cross with an F2 generation will have these fractions and these numbers. So you'll see 9, 3, 3, and 1 several times. And it doesn't matter what the characteristics are, as long as the method is the same, you will always have these ratios. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.